Yes, ma'am. How high was this? Are we steady? Are we standing on the the um, abutment or whatever held? Did, did you hear the lady's question? How high was it? We can tell to a degree because where we're standing was almost dry ground, except the water was flowing on the other side of the road and coming down the wash. And we see how back where Vicky's at, we can see the debris and how it washed clear. We can see the debris that water topped out right here and down by the restrooms, the bases, it was flowing three to four or five feet high. But right here, I think we almost would have been dry. Almost, because I can see that there wasn't much water flowing here, but we would have been surrounded by a river of water. We would have been in a heck of a mess, because who knows when the water would have stopped rising. Yeah. You know, who knows? But right here, right where I'm standing anyway, you can, you can see the water line. You can see the little woody debris here. So this was a little bit of almost dry ground with water swirling on both sides. Other questions? How much do they anticipate the repair costs are? Right, your, your tax dollars are going to repair Highway 190. What we're told is about $15 million. Jeez. That's almost a million dollars a mile. So there's about 13 miles of pretty devastated road here. That uh, uh, Most of you saw the different sections of pavement, right? You saw some of the old pavement was down below. We can see that when we go further, too. We'll see the pavement up above us, and halfway below, we'll see another section of black pavement from an older road. When they rip out what remains of the road, my understanding is they're going to set the road lower. It will be more susceptible to smaller floods, but they're anticipating it would just drop gravel on top of it, and they can clear gravel off easily. Whereas this road was totally devastated and undercut, partially because it did set so hot. And as you look, notice they have a lot of what's called riprap. There's other names. It's big metal sections that have rocks in between. It's meant to protect portions of the roadway. In previous floods, that riprap worked really well it didn't handle it this flood. This wow. flood just ripped it out. And you'll see sections of that. Some of you where you're parked over there, you should can see big sections where this uh, uh, metal uh, coils and stuff, the rocks inside, it was just ripped out by the flood. Okay. Other questions right here? Yes, ma'am. You talked about the Caltrans yes. place of expense. What about the parking lot? Ah, the, mm -hmm. the parking lot we're going to try and piggyback on <laughs> with the Caltrans things. We're going to be using some of your fee demo money to help that you've been paying an entrance, some of your campground fees, entrance fees, etc. Because we're going to put the new parking lot here, the new restrooms up there. We'll put a path and hopefully a couple of interpretive panels explaining to people who come here later some of what I've explained today about the cut, about the size and the tremendous force of the flood. Unfortunately, we're going to not be able to leave any of those restrooms as a reminder. They'll be removed, but you will have an opportunity to see and get a closer look of what happened there. And it's one thing I neglected to tell you, but it's going to be even more important when we go to the Ryan kiosk. As you see me in the middle of the road, for goodness sakes, you take the middle of the road. Because some of those places that drop off on the edge might be five or six feet. So don't be afraid to ride the middle of the road unless we see a car coming by the other direction like we just saw the state police go by or the sheriff. Um, what I'd like to do is take you a little closer to the cut. We're going to be there a short time and then we're going to go towards the base of the restrooms and over to the restrooms. So be careful around the cut. I'm not allowed to have anybody be injured out here. So be careful, but walk carefully. It goes to a degree. Just don't get too close. Don't get too close. How much of that was? Who cut it? Um, only the upper part. This has been erosion over 60 years. The current flood cut an extra five feet or so down. Again, don't get too close. This is the cut. When they cut it 60 years ago, they cut the top here. They diverted the water. The water's been eroding through this solid rock for 60 years. The most recent flood cut about five feet deeper. And you can see the beautiful spirals, the color of the natural layers of this old lake bed sediment. This is part of the Furnace Creek formation for you geologists. 
and this cut goes down another 30 feet here. So again, don't get too close to the edge, but you can see what's happened, and you see how narrow it is. Even though it could take all the previous floods for the last 60 years, this one was too big. We also noticed a different color of material down here. There was a smaller rain event. September 11th, we had big floods to the south, and we got a little bit of rain here, and a mud flow came out of 20 Mule Team Canyon, and this, the tan-colored mud flow, came from September 11th. But the August 15th flood is what it cut it down dramatically and what went through the cut here. The question was the time frame for getting things fixed to stuff. The governor has signed the bill. The construction workers are going to be moving on site in the next week or two. Work is going to start later this month. And we understand paving and final work will be in March and April. So we're still looking at four or five months. Unless you're coming back to see flowers in the spring, don't get too the, close to the edge, please, folks. But unless you're coming back in the spring, Highway 190 won't be open until then. Other, yes, sir? How long did it take the water to recede? That's a good one. How long did it take the water to recede? Unfortunately, I wasn't here long enough to know for sure, but the best estimate is three to five hours. Three to five hours. Wow. Grab your last photos, and I'd like to show you some fascinating things right here by the base of the restrooms. Look at how they're off center. What happened? How did this happen? Where's my hydrologist and budding geologist? Everybody wants to know if there was anybody in there. I'll tell you, luckily those vehicles left and nobody was hiding in the restroom. That would have been a heck of a place to be. I don't think anybody was in there. It wasn't smooth. Now, I will tell you one thing. The construction workers, the contractor, whoever it was, never really anticipated this type of flood event. So those restrooms were not bolted down. They weighed 20 tons. They were just set on top. And the water came up with such force. And this is not just water. This is a slurry of mud. It has a greater ca carrying capacity. And it just floated those restrooms right off and washed them down here. But it also liquefied the ground. This ground was softened and liquefied so that these bases began to move. For some reason, this area here was more easily liquefied than over there. Those weren't moved. But this base, and I see the line, so this one's about where it should be. This base right here has moved this way. We see rocks lodged up against it. But it wouldn't have moved if the soil it was in wasn't loosened and somewhat liquefied. And for all I know, if those restrooms would have been bolted down, they still would have been ripped off. They would have just been more in pieces. As it was, they were just floated right off. Because they're going to put the parking area in a safer, higher location, and the restrooms up there, these will be removed. Those will be removed. They don't look in real bad shape, but they are damaged, and they're damaged enough. I think they're just going to have to be replaced. We'd love to reuse them if we could, but we just can't. There's no intention of leaving them for... So to speak, a tourist attraction. For tourist attractions, you know, we've talked about that. We have talked about leaving them. And the bottom line is they're considered a safety hazard. The first walk I was here, and don't go over there yet, please. The first walk I was here, I had a kid say, can I jump onto the roof of that restroom? And that that's one of the reasons this area is closed and considered unsafe, just because of somebody trying to do that. They are a fascinating interest to us. Ten years down the line, they'd also be a bit of an eyesore. So we will remove them. Now we're going to walk over there, but I will tell you this. It's unsafe to get too close to the edge of the pavement. The pavement has been undercut by sometimes this much. So there's nothing but a thin little bit of pavement. So to save injury, we can get closer, we can look at them, but don't get too close to the edge. This was the parking area here. It was swept free of everything, but the water went through there. But we can see the effect of the swirling water because this used to be level out here. So realize this has been cut here. This has been cut five or six deep, five or six feet deep as the water swirled and eroded this away. This was cut down to bedrock right here. And those restrooms went kerplunk 
and just were pushed a little bit. And both of them have three or four feet of mud and soil inside. Though, as I said, take my word for it, one of them still has the toilet paper in place. Other questions while we're here? You do see a bit of a high water line here. Just beyond the fence that wasn't ripped out, we can see all the woody debris. The high water line was just a little bit below that. You can imagine the swirling waters, just like a roaring torrent, a river, and it would have been sloshing around a bit. And as it sloshed up the side, the woody debris would have been washed out. So the high water is just a few feet below. You can see where that one rock was deposited. That's near the high water line there. So that is a pretty good flow.